Hi everyone, this is Sarah Lynch Thomason. Today I'm going to teach a song called Cotton Mill Girls. This is a great song for group singing, and it's been around in one form or another for about 90 years. I really like this song because it has a lot to say about women's lives in the southern textile mills in the early 20th century. It talks about why women went to work in the mills, what kinds of conditions they were working under, and how they fought back against hard conditions. So here's a little background on the song. As far as I can tell, it was first recorded by a trio called the Lee Brothers. They recorded the song as the Cotton Mill Blues in Atlanta in 1930. Since then, the song has been adapted and changed. Pete Seeger recorded a version in the 1950s, and Hetty West recorded another version in the 1960s. Since then, a lot of other musicians have done their own covers and interpretations. So now I'm going to teach the chorus to the song. It goes like this. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. So we'll break that down. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Try that with me. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Great, here's the next part. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Do that with me. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Awesome. Here's the last part. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. Try that. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. Awesome. Let's do the whole thing together. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. So now I'm going to sing the whole song. You can join in on the chorus, and each verse ends with a little tag that also sounds a lot like the chorus, so you can join in there too. Well, I've worked in a cotton mill all my life. I ain't got nothing but a barlow knife, and it's hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere. In 1915, we heard it said, move to cotton country and you'll get ahead, and it's hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere. Us country folks, we must have been ill for leaving the mountains and going to the mill and it's hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere. Well, look at that train going round the curve. She's loaded down with cotton mill girls and it's hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. Us girls, we work 10 hours a day for 14 cents of measly pay, and it's hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. They raised our wages half a cent more, but it went up a dime in the company store, and it's hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. I went downstairs to get a drink of water. Along comes the boss, says I'll dock you a quarter. It's hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. You can dock me a quarter, dock me a dime, but I'll go to the office and I'll get my time. And it's hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. Well, working in a cotton mill ain't no harm, but I'd heap rather be down on the farm. And it's hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. And when I die, don't bury me at all. Just hang my body from the spinning room wall and pickle my bones in Alky Hall. Hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere, yes. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. Awesome. So let's learn some of the history behind these verses. So one of the first lines in the song is, in 1915, we heard it said, move to cotton country and you'll get ahead. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were a time of tremendous growth for the textile industry in the South. 
New England companies started to open up new factories in the South, and in some cases they moved their entire infrastructure to the South. The advantage of opening up factories in the South was threefold. One, access to cheap water power. Two, access to the source material, i.e. cotton. And three, access to a cheap and non-unionized labor market. These same advantages also inspired Southern investors to open up their own factories. This burgeoning Southern industry came into a huge boom during World War I. The war required parachutes and uniforms and lots of other materials made from textiles. So even before the United States was involved in the war militarily, it was producing a lot of textiles for the conflict. So by 1915, people across the South were moving to cotton mill towns to take advantage of new jobs and competitive wages. So who were the people who were coming to work in these cotton mill towns? Our song says, us country folks, we must have been ill for leaving the mountains and going to the mill. A lot of the people coming to work in textile factories were from the rural South and from Appalachia. Many of them had been working as tenant farmers and sharecroppers and were stuck in cycles of debt to their landowners. In addition, generations of soil depletion and deforestation had made it hard for a lot of farming families to make a living. So the idea of getting to go to a factory and get a paycheck every two weeks was really appealing. And to be clear, the jobs in the Southern textile industry were almost exclusively for white people. This was extremely segregated work. Black workers might be hired to do things like unload cotton or to work as custodians, but they were never hired for jobs like spinning, weaving, or fixing the machines. A lot of folks went to work in the mills with the idea that they could save up some money and then return to farming or return to their family's land. But most were never able to do that. So this line of, we must have been ill for leaving the mountains and going to the mill, you could interpret that as saying, we made a mistake, we should have stayed on the farm. We haven't become prosperous in the ways that we had hoped. So then we have the line, they raised our wages half a cent more, but it went up a dime in the company store. Many of us are familiar with the image of the Appalachian Coal Company town, a town where the company provides all of the infrastructure for its workers. Company run housing, a company run goods store, company doctors, even company preachers. Well, a lot of textile mill companies took the same approach. Textile mill towns dotted the Southeast in the early 20th century. And while things like company run housing could provide a certain level of comfort for workers, it also was a way to control workers' lives. For example, if wages were raised, a way to reabsorb that money could be to raise the price of goods in the company run store. So in our song, over and over, we hear that chorus. Hard times, cotton mill girls, hard times everywhere. Like in New England, a lot of the people doing the work in the textile industry were women. It wasn't unusual for women to make up as much as 50% of the workforce of a mill. For a lot of the women working in the 19 teens and 20s in textile factories, this was the first job outside of the home they had ever had. A lot of them were teenagers, and this work gave them a sense of pride and independence. Women were a powerful force in the Southern textile industry, and they were often amongst the first workers to instigate strikes for better pay and shorter work hours. And if you want to learn about a strike started by women in the textile industry, you can subscribe to my Patreon and get a bonus essay on the Elizabethan rayon strikes of 1929. Let's examine one more aspect of this song. In the last few verses, the narrator has an altercation with her boss. She says, I went downstairs to get a drink of water. Along comes the boss, says I'll dock you a quarter. Remember that big boom that happened in World War I? Well, afterwards, there was a slump in the industry. Wages went down, and workers didn't have the same kind of bargaining power they had had during the war. In addition, it became a popular trend for textile companies to hire efficiency experts to come into the mills and make recommendations about how to maximize output and profit. This often meant firing a lot of the workers and making those that remained work twice as hard. In addition, harsh rules were enacted to maximize efficiency making it harder for workers to leave their posts and do basic things like eat lunch, go to the bathroom, or get a drink of water. So in this song, the narrator is getting in trouble just by getting a drink of water. Her boss says he's gonna take her pay away. But she fires back. 
She says, I'm gonna go to the office and get my time. I'm gonna make sure I'm paid for my labor. And that's a reminder of how fiery and strong women in the textile industry were. They had to be to survive. Women played an incremental role in textile strikes that took place across Western North Carolina, East Tennessee, and the Piedmont in 1929. And they played a big role in a national strike that took place in 1934. So equipped with all this knowledge and all this awareness of the resilience of women and all the workers in the textile industry, let's sing that chorus one more time together. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times, cotton mill girls. Hard times everywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like it, subscribe to my Patreon. You'll also get a lot of bonus material, like my digital singles, my discography, and illustrations I'm working on. And if you're already a patron, thank you so much! One more thing. I know I've focused a lot today on some of the harsher aspects of the textile industry, but I know that for a lot of families and communities, the industry brought a certain amount of stability and even prosperity. I would love to hear more about your family or community's experience in the comments below.